Hello, I hope you're excited to learn your way around a bird because we are going to learn every part of this white-throated sparrow. We're going to start with the auriculars right here, the ear patch. If you take a look at the feathers, you'll notice they're a little bit darker. That's because they're letting sound pass through and go to the ear right beneath. So you can really see the auriculars on a lilac breasted roller. It's the brown colored patch below its eye. Next are the lores, this pink area right here. The lores are the area between the eye and the beak, and you'll notice it's from the top of the eye to the beak and from the bottom of the eye up to the beak, so it makes kind of a trapezoid shape. The lores are obvious on a bird like a heron, where it's a bare patch of skin. Behind the eye, there's the eye line. Birds don't need eyeliner if they have an eye line, and that is directly behind their eye. This bee eater has an amazing eye line. It goes from the front to the back, which technically makes it an eye stripe, but the part at the back is the eye line. Above their eye is the supercilium, also known as the eyebrow. I really like the supercilium on this bird. Around the eye, sometimes birds have a ring of feathers that's called an eye ring. Eye rings are really helpful as field marks when you're trying to identify birds because they really stand out when you're looking at a bird. This bird has a really prominent eye ring that would help you to identify it. Above the supercilium is the crown stripe, and you can see the white-throated sparrow has a crown stripe. Oh, and then there's the median crown stripe, which is the crown stripe up on the top. The white crown sparrow is really helpful for seeing the difference between just a normal crown stripe and the median crown stripe. So if you look at the top of its head, the black lines are crown stripes, and then the one in the middle is a median crown stripe. All those stripes together are the area that's called the crown, and sometimes birds will just have a solid color there. That's another thing you can look for when you're identifying birds. The front of the crown is called the forehead, and some birds have a crest of feathers sticking out the top, like this pigeon. Below the beak is the throat, this dark blue area that you see here. So that would be famous on a bird like a ruby-throated hummingbird. And then the top of the throat, right below the beak, is the chin. Sometimes there will be an interesting patch of feathers here. I like the one on this caracara. Sometimes birds have whiskers or stripes on the sides of their faces. This is the malar area, so these are called malar stripes. Technically, the one closer to the eye is called the subauricular stripe, and the one further from the eye is called the malar stripe. But you can call them both malar stripes. So you can see the malar stripes on the Eurasian J. The beak does have a technical name. Technically, it's called the upper mandible and the lower mandible. Below the auriculars is the creatively named side of neck in pink here. And on the kingfisher, you can see the side of neck in white. The back of the bird's head is called the nape in green here. And the green-naped lorikeet, which has a prominent yellow nape. Okay, let's work our way to the other parts of the bird. The side of the bird is the part under its wing, specifically. Sometimes little parts stick out, but it's mostly the part under the wing. The belly is the main under part of the bird. And the breast is the entire front of the bird. So this Swainson's lorikeet has a really prominent breast. It's kind of like highlighted in orange. Then there are the thighs, which are a short patch of feathers at the top of the legs. The rear feathers are the tail. No big surprise there. But the feathers right next to the tail have some interesting names. They're the undertail coverts. I don't know why they're called covert feathers. They do cover things, but uh, it's interesting to call them covert. This white-throated sparrow has light undertail covert feathers. And then on top of the tail are upper tail coverts. The back of the bird is kind of interesting. The rump of the bird is the part of the back that you can see behind the wings. And the back is the part of the back that you can see in front of the wings. This bee eater helps illustrate it. You can see the green wings, and then it's got a reddish back and a blue rump in front of its blue tail. And then we have the wings. So we have the scapulars, the feathers right at the top of the wing. It shows up much better when the wings are outstretched, so I'll show you that in a second. These covering feathers are called covert feathers again. There are greater and lesser covert feathers, mostly based on whether they're big or small. And then there are the primaries, which are some of the feathers used for flight. We'll look at the rest soon. So there's one map of a bird. 
We've identified all the major regions. Next, let's talk about the flight feathers. Here is a different view of the wings. So the, the tail feathers are technically called retrices, if that ever comes up, that's what that means. And the flight feathers are called remiges. I'm not going to fault you for not using those words in normal conversation, but you might read about them sometimes, so there you go, that's what they are. The small feathers on the inside of the wing are the wing linings. And then if you look at the flight feathers, you'll notice there's a difference between the outer flight feathers and the inner flight feathers. The inner flight feathers tend to be smaller and uh, more lined up, and the outer flight feathers tend to be more pointed. They have more pointy tips. The outer pointy feathers are called primaries, and the inner rounded feathers are called secondaries. The secondaries closest to the body are called tertials. Primary versus secondary feathers has to do with what part of the wing they are attached to. If they're attached to the outer part of the wing bones, then they're primaries. If they're attached to the inner part of the wing bones, then they're secondaries. Here, I'm going to show you a different gull so that you can see the difference between primaries and secondaries a little bit better. The primary feathers are the pointed ones that form kind of a group on the outer edges of the wing. So the outer feathers are primaries and the inner feathers are secondaries. And then if you look at this bird with its wings stretched out, you'll notice that there's some feathers in the middle that don't quite line up with the other ones. Those are the scapulars. When the wings are folded up, they'll make kind of a line at the top of the wing. And with that, you now know your way around a bird. We've done the complete map of a bird. There are some more technical terms for the different parts of a bird, but obviously there are different levels of detail in different types of maps, and this one is a general broad overview of the different parts of a bird. So I hope this gives you some vocabulary where you're able to talk about the different parts of a bird, or maybe it will help you make an interesting discovery about the world of birds around you. Thanks for taking the time to learn about birds this week. Here's a diagram of other videos you can watch on this channel, and you can subscribe to learn your way around a bird. Thanks for stopping by this week to learn what makes life awesome.